text is Philippians 1 9. And this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment, that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. Lord, I pray that you will keep our hearts sincere and without offense um, until your day, until you return. God, I pray keep us pure and holy before you. Lord, I pray that you will just grow us in love and knowledge for you and others. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, good morning, Cornerstone. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, praise God. To God be the glory. This is the day that you made. Uh, we shall rejoice and be glad in it. And I know you're rejoicing right now. Because guess what? New mercy you received this morning. And you are alive and you are here. So again, to God be the glory. Uh, my name is Reverend Dr. Gary Carr. And I am one of the uh, professors here at Cornerstone, Cornerstone College. But I've been given an opportunity right now to uh, introduce a, 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 the speaker of the hour. Uh, uh, as Proverbs 31 depicts uh, a strong woman who puts God wisdom into practice in her life. And she blesses people around her, and and that is my wife, uh, Reverend Robin Carr. Uh, uh, we are uh, uh, pastors at Shallow New Site Baptist Church in uh, Stafford, Virginia. Uh, uh, we've been married uh, 38 years, and my uh, Christian walk started with her because uh, if I did not seek the Lord, uh, we couldn't date no longer. And uh, <laughs> when I asked her. For a hand in marriage, uh, you know, I had to be yoked, not unequally yoked. So, again, I thank God for her in my life. Uh, she is Reverend Robin, uh, Robin Carr, who is the apple of my eye, as well as uh, keep me uh, rooted in the Word of God. Uh, one thing, uh, let me share something with you. If you ever partner with another Reverend, if you ever do anything wrong, first thing she's going to say, you know you're Reverend. That's, That's right. not good. That's right. Okay, so, but again, my wife, uh, Reverend Robin Carr. Praise the Lord, Cornerstone. Amen. You, you know, the Bible tells us in Psalms 134 and 2 to raise our hands and bless the Lord. So can we try to do that now and use our hands to praise him as we sing to him? I bless the Lord at all times.
telling you the Lord is great. God, you are holy. That's why we love your name, God. God, you are great. That's why we love your name, God. God, we know you love us, Lord God. You first love us. That's why we love your name, God. Cornerstone College, I bring you greetings in the name of Christ Jesus. The text today is 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 32 through 39. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 32 through 39. I will be reading from the New International Version, and it reads this way. David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go to fight him. Saul replied, you are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it struck it and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. Saul said to David, go, and the Lord be with you. Then Saul dressed David in his own tunic. He put a coat of armor on him and a bronze helmet on his head. David fastened on his sword over the tunic and tried walking around because he was not used to them. I cannot go with these, he said to Saul because I am not used to them. So he took them off. 
I want to talk this morning about the danger of fighting with the wrong weapon. The danger of fighting with the wrong weapon. We live in a time where it seems that folks just can't deal with everyday life. I mean, look at what is going on. Joblessness remains high and millions report that their households do not get enough to eat or they are behind on rent payments. Households with children face especially high hardship rates and considerable evidence suggests that reducing childhood hardship and poverty would yield improvements in education and health, higher productivity and earnings, less incarceration, and bring about other lasting benefits to our children and our society. Then there is the George Floyd trial and numerous mass shooting incidents. Numerous lives have been and are being lost during this pandemic and new variances have taken the lead as the number of coronavirus cases are going up. As a result of all these things that have and are taking place, there is a question concerning our security. But what tops that off is that some even question God. Sometimes it seems the question becomes, where is God? Where is the God that we sing about and say he is so good? Where is God when these things are happening? The book of Revelation says that chaos and confusion will happen in the last days. And what Americans do not want to hear is that the wrath of God is not just Old Testament. It is New Testament and current day news. All of these things to include natural disasters with hurricanes and tornadoes and floods. These acts of calamity and tragedy. It appears that America has this frame of mind called American exceptionalism where we think that America is beyond reproach. Because of the freedom within our country, there are those who think that they are beyond reproach and some act as if they are beyond the hands of God. Here in America, we struggle to understand and we become devastated when these things happen on our soil. Uh, we tend to think that these calamities are not supposed to happen here and that's American exceptionalism, whereas we think we're special. Look at the unraveling of our morality. Look at what is going on in our schools since God was taken out of them. And tell me if you think God is really pleased with us. We have got to call this nation back to God. Amen. With all the bumps and bruises of some of the tragedies in this country, it would seem that the light bulb would come on. And someone in a high position of authority will realize how the United States has separated itself from God. The word of God declares that in times like these, that if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal the land. In times like these, instead of trying to handle these matters with our own power and intellect, instead of trying to handle these things with a gun, we need to let God fight our battles. Amen. Yes. With all that our country is dealing with, with both domestic and internationally uh, problems, the people of God need to understand that what we are really going through is a spiritual war. And what I, as a minister of the gospel, have come to tell you is when you are in war, be it personal or political, there is a danger in fighting with the wrong weapon. In the 17th chapter of 1 Samuel, you will find that David went back and forth between the war zone and home as needed. David was a spirit-filled man and his decisions were the will of God and for the glory of God. You see, many people make their own decisions and tend to live life according to their own will, but not David. Whatever move David made, he was guided by the preordained hand of God. 
We also have Goliath in our text, who is described as standing nine feet, nine inches tall, wearing a coat that weighed 125 pounds and carrying a spear that weighed 15 pounds. Each morning and evening, Goliath presented himself to the army of Israel. And on this particular day, Jesse, who is David's father, he sent David to the battlefield to carry food supplies to his three brothers and their commanding officer. You see, back then the soldiers at that time, they had to provide their own foods and their own rations. So David got up early that morning to take food to the war zone. David had heard about Goliath. Nobody in the Jewish army volunteered to go against Goliath. And not even King Saul, who stood head and shoulders above his men. Because of this crisis, King Saul made a generous offer to the man who would silence Goliath. Saul said that the man who would silence Goliath could not only marry one of his daughters, but whoever defeated Goliath would also receive great riches from the king, and the man's father's house would come off the tax rolls. King Saul hoped someone would be tempted by the offer and try to defeat Goliath. David, at the time of our text, was too young to serve in the army, but David thought was that anybody who had faith in God could defeat Goliath. Amen. So when David went to take food to his brothers, all he saw were men fleeing from the field at the very sight of Goliath. I mean, even King Saul was afraid. However, if we look at this situation with spiritual eyes, if you look at the lesson in this text, you would know that God had brought David to this location for such a time as this. And when God puts you into a situation, he has already given you all you need to accept the challenge. Cornerstone, David was prepared for battle and he was prepared for battle because of his faith. There are a few things I want to tell you today in regards to stepping out in faith. And the first point is be careful who you listen to Amen. when you step out on faith. Amen. Uh, watch out for the naysayers. The naysayers are the ones who frequently engage in being genuinely disruptive to what God has called you to do. Uh, they generally have a laid back attitude. They constantly emphasize the worst of a situation. They have the capacity to rant and whine for hours on end about the most insignificant inconveniences. They tend to travel solo and they have the keen ability to spread their pessimistic attitude to a group of unsuspecting bystanders. And they have the ability to encourage others to follow the path that is not the path that God has ordained. When the opportunity arises, a naysayer's true nature will be exposed and they will stop at nothing to bring a sense of negativity to a situation. You see, young folks, I want you to know that whenever you step out by faith, there will always be somebody there to discourage you. It will be someone who feels they have the right to plant that negative seed. And in this case, it was David's eldest brother, Eliab. Eliab became angry when he heard David inquiring about Goliath. In verse 28 through 30 of our text, you will see that David's brother ridiculed him. Eliab forgot all about the fact that David had come to bring him and the other two brothers, Abinadab and Shamar, food, and he became the naysayer. So be careful who you listen to when you step out on faith. Uh, secondly, when you step out on faith, everyone will not accept the assignment that is upon your life. And sometimes it's your own family. David's brothers, Eliab, Abinadab, and Shammah had seen David anointed by Samuel, but they didn't understand what that meant. Those whom God calls into his ministry, he anoints. He gives assignments and the ability to accomplish his will. The assignment or the anointing is simply the power of the Holy Spirit that flows through an individual to empower them to accomplish God's will. Without the assignment or the anointing from God, 
We have to rely upon our own strength and ability. But with God's assignment, we are literally agents of God's divine power. What is impossible in one's own strength and ability becomes possible when it is done under the assignment and the anointing from God. You see, the fact that David's own brothers did not accept his anointing, it goes along with Joseph, whose brothers did not like him, lied on him, and sold him to be a slave. Moses was criticized by his own brother and sister, and our Lord Jesus Christ. He, his earthly family at one time misunderstood him and opposed his ministry. Now here is where the lesson comes in. Even though David's brothers did not accept the calling God had on David's life, David did not allow their words to discourage him because he knew that God could and would defeat the giant. You see, when you are on God's assignment, how do you see the challenges that come along with that assignment. When you stand on a hillside and see a nine foot tall giant taunting you, how do you view him? Is the giant an overwhelming obstacle or an opportunity for the glory of God to be revealed? I bring this question to mind because we cannot avoid our Goliaths. Our Goliaths are necessary for us to mature as Christians. Your Goliath may be an addiction, a habit, an attitude, unemployment, marital problems, overspending, an illness, or even loneliness. Looking at this assignment on David's life, we learn some principles about facing the obstacles that come up in the life of those who have an assignment from God. We can see from this text just how we are to deal with the chaotic situations that are currently taking place in these times in which we live. Are you trying to win the battle using your own power, your own clique, your own knowledge, which has no protection from God? Or do you stand by faith in the assignment from God? Listen to what King Saul said to David. He told David, you are not able to go against this Philistine. You are not able to fight with him, for you are but a youth. And he is a man of war from his youth. Saul was given the report of the ten unbelieving spies who saw the giants in Canaan and decided it was impossible to enter the land. When Saul was talking to David, it was based on him walking by sight. So the third lesson in our text is when you walk by sight, we calculate everything from the human perspective. Dismissing the calling of God. You see, when we walk by sight, we tend to choose the wrong weapon. But when we walk by faith, God comes into the equation with results of victory. David had already experienced the power of God in his life. So he knew that the Lord could turn human power into supernatural power. While caring for sheep, David had killed a lion and a bear. So David knew that the Lord could deliver him out of the hands of Goliath. David did not come up with a war strategy. Uh, he did not come up with war tactics. David did not get a group of men together and plan a strategy. And he didn't use a gun. David saw Goliath as just another animal attacking God's flock. As Christians, we can look at our own personal Goliath in one or two ways. We can look at our Goliath with the eyes of the faithful, or we can look at Goliath with the eyes of the faithless. Hayden Robinson said, in any situation, what you are determines what you see, and what you see determines what you do. Uh, let me say that again. In any situation, what you are determines what you see, and what you see determines what you do. You see, we must view every situation in our lives through spiritual eyes. We must put our trust and confidence in God. It is he who fights our battles. We tend to cast our personal weapons aside and let God fight our death by battles. That's what we need to do. No matter who or what shows up, no matter how 
physically or intellectually fit our opponents may appear in men's eyes. At the end of the day, God is still God. Amen. Remember that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell within. So when God purposes your life and gives you an assignment, he will provide all that you need. I'm looking in these young folks' direction because I see missions. I see assignments. And I pray that you be strong enough to withstand the worldly perspective. And I like that because when I came into the class, that's exactly where God was. That's confirmation for me for this message for you today. So we must trust God to do the work. And remember that we are just the vessel. God has a supernatural assignment with your name on it. The prophet Isaiah tells us that the purpose of the anointing is to break the yoke and set people free. The assignment upon you is a gift from God because of the relationship you have with God. Let me say that again. The assignment upon you is a gift from God because of your relationship you have with God. Because of the time you spend with God. Because of the sacrifice you make to serve God. God gives the anointing. And he chooses. And his standards are not man's standards. Deuteronomy 3 and 22 says, Ye shall not fear them. For the Lord your God, he shall fight for you. How many of you believe God will fight our battles? Amen. God will fight our battles means we do not have to live in fear. We don't have to be anxious. We do not have to be discouraged when the Goliath happens in our lives. When it seems a situation is hopeless or a matter at hand is too overwhelming, we as Christians must remember that no problem is beyond the scope of God's so sovereign care for his children. God has promised to take care of us and he has promised to make our burdens light. God loves us beyond measure. So have faith in God, who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly. And he will fulfill all that you will ask or think. Let God fight your battles. And let's not fight with the wrong weapon. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence in this place. Lord God, I bless, ask that you bless every household here, Lord God. Bless this school, Lord God. Lord God, let the school not listen to the naysayers, Lord God. Lord God, you purpose this school, Lord God. Show up and show out, Lord God. Fall fresh upon everyone here today from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. This we ask in the matchless and the holy name of Jesus. Amen. And thank you. And everyone, thank you for being with, uh, with us today. Hi, I want to let everybody know that due to the forecasted bad weather on Saturday, that the CCV bonfire has been moved to Friday night just one day ahead of what it was scheduled for. So Sharon Todd, our events coordinator, is uh, sending out an email today to let you all know and if you'll just reply so that she can get another head count for Friday, but it'll be 5.30 on Friday. Um, if you have, you know, and please feel free to come later, like I have another job that I'm gonna be able to come later, so, but if you can't make it right at 5.30, come later because, you know, there's several events we're gonna be having and then the bonfire later on, so. You're all welcome to come to the bonfire this Friday uh, at 5.30 at uh, Wilderness Presidential Resort. And again, you should be receiving an email from Sharon Todd and you can just reply to that. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, King Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your presence here today, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you that you are the lamp upon our feet and that we, we ask that you make the path, Lord God. Direct us, dear God. Lord God, we pray that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart, that it be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you are our strength, and Lord, you are our redeemer. 
Go in peace.